How's it going? What have you been up to? I, if I was really bad, I would have said, how was your week off last week? <laughs> so I am, I am awful. I'm aware. Luke Rock is here to help us out tonight. We, for, I'll go into why. All right. First of all, the reason Luke is here is because Tara's husband, uh, Dan, just went in for surgery for pancreatic Ooh, la, la. cancer. Good news is he's recovering well. They they look like they've got it. It's probably they're gonna you know do all the checkups. He's probably in remission now. Yay! Awesome. Yeah. Um, that's why catching that Nine. really matters. So Tara is she's had all people in her house. Her sister, friends of Dan, all that. Nine. She's she's off tonight looking after him. Um, as for me, for the past oh three weeks ish, we've been yeah. going back and forth, Sarah. After two doctor's visits and three emergency room trips, even giving them her full medical history, it took them all of that to figure out she had um, pancreatitis. A, a simple blood test would have, would have determined it um, because that's uh, how that works. And she, she has a history. She, she told them that. That nope. would require someone having to read that. And by the time they they did finally go, oh, okay, we'll test you for it. They had to admit her to the hospital. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, not only just the war the revisits are more than bad enough, but when something that easily died, and I've worked in healthcare for seven and a half years mm. before calling it a day, it doesn't shock me. It doesn't, and and that's awful. But I'm glad she's back home. Yeah, she's she's feeling much better now. She's recovered. Exactly. Right? But uh, we're going to have fun with insurance soon. I feel feel sure mm -hmm. because for th three ER visits and four days in the hospital. Yeah. Um, from what I I don't know I there's so many other things I go into I don't want to get into healthcare shenanigans right now I don't think you do either considering the fun week you had all I am is I'm counting the blessings I'm glad uh, she's doing okay yeah I'm glad Tara's husband's doing okay it's a mess could be much worse and. I, I I want I want to say words that if I say them I'll go to jail. So ah, well, okay then. I want to say jail words. Speaking of jail, here's the show. Oh <laughs> my god, this week, my dude. So yeah, that, uh, you, that might have been my first actual segue on your show. <laughs> and that, going into a blind, I think that works well enough. I count that for me. Each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And, um... <sighs> well, it's not poop! Yay! Luke, it's, it's, it's not poop. Awesome! Already a step in the right direction. Put it over in the the Twitter for you, so you perfect. Can yeah, that make it easy. It's, it's it's not poop. What a sales pitch! <laughs> but um, Ontario man Aww. calls nine one one because he's stuck in traffic and has to go pee. Police force, man. police force in Ontario has released a 911 audio after a man called the emergency line to report he had to go pee while stuck in traffic. The regional police released the audio on Friday to remind people about the proper uses of dialing 911. When the 38 second call began, the operator asked the man if he needs police, fire, or ambulance. He first says he needs an ambulance, but tells the operator he actually needs police. The thing is, quote. I have to pee, and these guys are not mer are not moving. 
This is your emergency, the operator responds. That you have to pee. And how are the police going to help you urinate? Hats off to that operator. She's done. Hats off. She's done. The caller then repeats to the operator, I have to pee, man. Quote, what's the what's the caller five? Because <laughs> that's the only way I'd accept this. I'm not sure what you'd like me to do if you have to urinate. I can't help you with that. The operator says before <laughs> disconnecting the call. We were so oh. we were so sure this week we would have stories of people calling nine one one when Facebook went down. So this one kind of caught me off guard. Right. Man, Canadians are so polite, they'll even ask in an emergency to go to the bathroom. Any means they can to get permission. Uh, Any means. Please, please help me go to the bathroom. Oh. How bad? See, here in the States, if it's that big of an emergency, you're stuck in traffic, what would you do? I would pee on the side of the road. Same. I just open the door. Either pee on the side of the road or open the door a little. If I really that big of an emergency, you got You do what you got to do. And it's awful, <laughs> but you do what you got to do. Uh, but man, Canada just—it's that level of politeness and manners. They still need to ask, and they want to make sure everything's okay. They'll even ask for help. <laughs> Again, though, <laughs> this operator—you know—she's heard some crap, and she's like, "No, the, the, just done. Just fucking done." Just officially yeah. fucking done. I swear to you, that cop is not going to help you, and he's going to make things much worse if he has to pull up to you to help you pee, if that's what it is. Much worse. I mean, if you're stuck in a car and you want to pee, you don't call the cops. You call you know, Amazon. They, they have a solution for that. They'll give you a job, too, if you, if you can prove you, You've already proved you can hold it long enough. Yeah. They love that. Yeah. They love that. <laughs> How good are you on a factory line, sir? Ugh. <sighs> I mean, to be fair, Amazon, they get that driver there fast. Uh, so our next one is. All right. You got the, the concept down. I, you didn't fucking understand the assignment is what this one is. Um, okay. Robert <laughs> caught after trying to rob the same bank again. This time I got it. What? No. Fountain Valley, California. A man suspected of robbing a Southern California bank was arrested when he returned to try to rob the same branch the following day. It wasn't like five years apart, like going in for the big score. It was a day after. One day later. The man Grady, had... what do you think of this? He just stood up as soon as I started shouting. Grady's, Grady has what's no part of the shit. Uh, um, this man suspected of robbing a Southern California bank was arrested when he returned to try to rain, to rob the same branch the following day. The man entered a Chase bank in the city of Fountain Valley Monday afternoon, gave a teller a note demanding money. He fled with, quote, a large amount of cash before officers got to the bank. Late Tuesday morning, police received a call about another robbery in progress at the same Chase bank. He got away with it and he came back. Responding officers arrested the 33-year-old suspect, the man who has prior convictions for robbery, being held at the Orange County Jail for lack of $170,000 bail. Oh. It's like true, true successful bank robberies are extremely rare now. Yeah, he most- does it. And then he goes back for seconds. Yeah, most of the time they don't, they don't rob the banks anymore. They fucking put the, the spoof swipers on the ATMs and, and get your fucking money that way. Yeah. Oh, this guy could never figure that out. Not a chance in the world. No way. <laughs> Dude was like, that was easy. I'm not doing anything tomorrow. Shit. <laughs> Just hope it's not the same teller. They might figure something's up. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, how? <laughs> This is like, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, stop! Oh! Also, you're that greedy. You're just that (laughs) greedy. There's no other banks then for day two? Right! Not not in Fountain Valley, California? You couldn't even try another bank at that point? Yeah, Yeah, this one's closer. (laughs) I can walk to this one. (laughs) I don't want to go across town. I don't have a bus pass. 
Oh man. Oh, that court appoint that court appointed lawyer is yeah. not gonna have a prayer. Nothing. He's yeah. like, dang it. Done. Just go on the stand. Just go on the stand and don't you dare say a word. Just look <laughs> down to the ground and nod your head, and that's it. That's it. Oh, at 33, and man, you're, you, I don't know what kind of sentence you're getting, but it's big. Previous sentences, and you went back. You got away with a cash bank robbery. Like, seriously, if you, if you already have money, if you really want to steal from people, go set up an NFT. Yes. <laughs> Another thing this guy will never figure out. Yeah. Man, NF no oh, man, just try to sit him down for an NFT. If he if he's too lazy <laughs> to rob a different bank after day two, I don't think he's gonna be setting up any online uh blockchain accounts. Not a chance. This, this is like uh, it, it, it's like fucking Sherlock Holmes having to track down a toddler. Oh. <laughs> All right. It'd be, it'd be Sherlock Holmes trying to follow the staff like one dollar bills because there was a hole in the sackcloth from the bank, and he's just following the trail back to the burglar's house. Speaking of shit happening again, <laughs> uh, a while back we did a story. Uh, 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 Tara was around for this one. That it was really impressive. Um, there's a a video game called War Thunder. That is, it's a tank, you know, army, blah, shooty shooty game. Okay. And on the forums for War Thunder, as they were arguing about various tanks and who was right and who was wrong. I don't like this already. It's going to be some nerd rage. I can just tell. A dude got on there and to prove himself correct, leaked classified documents about tanks. And the forum <laughs> went nuts and the fucking home office got involved and it was a thing. Yeah. And... Well, guess what? Same game, same forum. It it fuck it fucking ha it fucking happened again. At what point it, do they have to put that in their terms of service now? When you sign up for these forums and discords, you will not leak government agents, uh, government vehicle security or notes. First leak took place only three months ago when someone had access to classified tank documents belonging to the British Army and posted them on a forder, forum in order to try and get War Thunder to change some details about a tank that it had got wrong. Oh, you dorks! Really? That's what this was all about? Oh. As reported by the UK Defense Journal, Lace Incidents, however, is a classic case of a player versus player argument. Which ended up with one of them posting secret military information to prove they were right. Um, uh, what was posted was the manual of the French Leclerc main battle tank. Oh. The moderator, his, his way of handling this, guys, it's not funny to leak classified documents of modern equipment. What? You're the mod for the form? You're like, Guys, come on, that's not funny. You know what you did. Oh. Oh. What, what was this going to prove? It was player versus player. What, what were you really going to get out of this? It, this really? Being right. The, I, hope it, I hope you tell all the cellmates that. My, yeah, but I was right about my tank section. My dude, how much of the How much of Twitter... How much of just Twitter are, is oh, yeah. two imbeciles going back and forth for 20 hours? Yes. And I can say from experience because fuckers will get in my mentions and doing that and they won't goddamn untag me. You remember when Avengers the Endgame came out and everyone was wrong about what they thought the end was going to be? Twitter was a nightmare fueled apocalypse because every comic book nerd was just on fire proving everyone else wrong. Yeah, we were, uh, no, actually Scarlet Witch could beat up Thanos, that type no, of stuff. We we were sure that that Ant-Man was going to go up Thanos's butt and blow him that up. That what I remember, that was the big thing. I know. Of serious arguments. But I don't remember them leaking anything mili military declass declassified information in those 
you would, debate. You'd think after the second time, the moderator would be like, uh, oh, yeah. call the fucking home office. They did it again. Okay. Not be like, guys, come on, guys. I'm going to get grounded again. You guys. Oh. Guys, it's not funny to leak classified documents of not an equipment. If you put the lives of many on st- it's such like a stepdad not knowing how to talk to his new stepson explanation. You wouldn't download a tank. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you're right. I wouldn't. I, I, you're, you're absolutely right. Oh, and it also says after he gave the statement, thanks for reading. <laughs> the next Guys, one is not. Oh, go ahead. The next one is um, a surprising amount of effort for surprisingly little payoff. You'd think if you were going to be invested in crime, it would be worth the risk of of losing your freedom and and your money and your all that. Yeah, you'd think you'd be wrong. Man breaks into Huntington County home, steals. Mountain Dew. A Huntington County man was arrested for burglary after police say he broke into a home and stole a bottle of Mountain Dew. Matthew Lane, 34, is facing felony burglary charges after breaking into a home in Blair Mills. Police uh, were called after 3 p.m. October 7th. A victim told police that Lane entered his home without permission and took a bottle of Mountain Dew from the fridge. Claim was arrested for burglary, placed in prison on $75,000 bail. And it probably wasn't even Baja Blast, so, you know. No, they, they rarely bottle that stuff, you know. Was, it, was the bottle signed by Steve-O or like a, someone from Five Finger Death Punch or something? And, the, and you, it was just tantalizing you through the window? You successfully broke into the house, too. Right? And all you take is the bottle of Mountain Dew there, without permission. <laughs> If I, gun to my head, if I had to break into someone's house and steal something, I'm not going to the fridge. No. I don't, I don't, why, why would you be like, well, I'm here, but I'm parched. Ooh, sweet, Diet Code Red. Awesome. They, and they don't like, they, they don't, they're not going to be like, oh, well, no, it's, it's okay. He just took a Mountain Dew. You broke into somebody's house. Yeah, they don't care about the 99 cent Mountain Dew bottle. They don't. I feel like there's more to this story, too, that's not being said. Because also, he broke in without permission and took a bottle of Mountain Dew. And they noticed the Mountain Dew was gone. If someone, like, took something out of my fridge, I don't know if I would notice right away. That's some free bear shit. Own. Yes. <laughs> but it's Mountain Dew. <laughs> I don't know, it's man. Not- There's some of us who are caffeine where that's involved. It's like we have like fucking spider sense. Someone's that's touching true. my fucking that's- Red Bull. Where was it? Central Pennsylvania? Man, I did not realize Mountain Dew was the hottest commodity in Central Pennsylvania right now. I, had n- I never would have guessed that in a million years. Like, if you, okay, look. You you are much more likely if you want to mount, f- fucking steal a fucking Mountain Dew, go to a goddamn convenience store, grab one, and run. You're probably no. getting away with it. You could knock over a soda machine and probably peel one out if you really wanted to that yeah. bad. You probably wouldn't be doing that much hard time for doing that as opposed to breaking into a house either. No. Oh, what man? Do you think he got to drink the Mountain Dew? Or do you think he like the cops found him too fast? I I don't know. Oh man! If he didn't even get a drink, that's just like what the fuck. Thirty four. <laughs> that, that ain't right. Oh, seventy five thousand dollar bail for a Mountain Dew. I hope it was the best Mountain Dew of your life, sir. I hope it was worth it. Probably not. It, I'm not even a Mountain Dew fan. But at the same time, I do know the addicts, and man, oh man, I hope it was worth it, sir. Next one's from Texas. Fucking hell. Um, in many of my jobs, coming up in the end of the day, I have always been tempted to cut a few corners, because I just want to get the fuck home. Whether it be yeah. retail, whether it be IT, whatever I've been working on, sometimes, some days, you're coming up on 5 o'clock, just want to get the fuck home. Right. 
Absolutely. And if if you're careful about it, it works out pretty well. But then, well, we've got video. Oh, uh, let's bring this up here. Because we have video. Where are you? There. Should have prepared for this. I, I already see the headline. I don't like this already. <laughs> uh. 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 Did I not have my shit right? There it is. Uh, this comes from Winnie, Texas. And uh, like I said, here's 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 a video. Uh, this is from a rice festival, and uh, they had a biplane out there. Instead of putting it on the truck to take it back, they decided to fly it home <laughs> using a street as a runway, and <laughs> clips, and there it goes. And miraculously, no one was hurt. Um, Looking at the plane now, like completely upside down, demolished. The fact that the pilot wasn't even hurt, or how, like, was there a pilot inside? Or they oh yeah, there's a pilot. I was gonna say I thought it wasn't just like a stationary thing. The fact that he wasn't hurt is a miracle. This was multiple people thought this was a good idea, and boom goes the dynamite. Um. A biplane was supposed to be towed back to the airport after being towed during a parade in Winnie. Ended up crashing on Highway I uh, Highway 124 when the pilot attempted to take off. Oh, uh, no one was injured in the crash, which was captured on video. Video released to the sheriff's office. The plane appears to be taking off from Highway 124 from the market basket. The plane becomes airborne just before crossing the intersection at LeBlanc Road. The plane can be seen clipping a street light and then appears to strike cables holding traffic signal lights before crashing into the median and flipping over just north of the intersection. You see, in order to get up, you have to get past those wires. See, those those, those don't get out of, of, of the way. Those, uh... Hey, um, in your neck of the woods, are airport runways just through every street, like right next to shopping centers? They, they oh, they're not. not? They're not. Oh, no, really? They're Why not. would that be? I just, I did the count too. Seven seconds that plane was in the air for before it crashed out. Seven seconds. Because you didn't want to bother towing it. He nope. said, eh, it's easier. Eh. Oh. The, the same Jill engine plane had been part of the Texas Rice Festival. Ah, that the, the world-renowned Texas Rice Festival. I, I don't know what what a biplane has. Are they, are they sewing the the the, the, the they, rice are they, with? Are they throwing rice out of the biplane for all the I, kids? <laughs> like rice kids, happy day! Oh, it, well, multiple people. That's what bothers me too. This was not just a pilot trying to get yeah. his plane back. Everybody this was, was like, my team. Yep. Yeah, this will be fine. Sure. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it's no problem. Bro, just don't be late for TGI Fridays. We're not going to save you a seat for too long. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just we'll just fly the, it's a plane. It's, it's a plane. Quick. Just fly the plane. Just fly it straight up above, above the stop sign. You'll be fine. You don't need to stop. Ugh. I just did the loop again. Seven seconds, and that plane is demolished. I, you, you are, this is one of those moments, this is, you shouldn't be alive. No, uh, look at it. Like, look how it landed and rolled. No, you, you shouldn't. You, 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 you got like death was on a potty break or some shit. You got lucky. Death was just watching. Like, oh no, come on now, really? Uh, I, I do not want to do the paperwork for this one. I can't take you back. Come oh, on now. Don't think, don't think I'm phoning it in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to do something else. Uh, I don't know. Um. Didn't hit I'm anybody, glad. didn't hurt himself. I My that, God. With how close those, like, that's an intersection. That's not just, like, even, like, a rural runway for those local, like, municipal airports. That's a legitimate houses in the background intersection. The fact that didn't even, like, the wheels or, like, part of the wind, like, wing didn't land in somebody's living room is a miracle. Oh. <sighs> okay. 
this is one of our this is this is gonna go in our, our mugshot hall of fame this one because <laughs> the prestigious mugshot hall of fame you're gonna look at this one and you're gonna agree with me no no i i trust your judgment i'm just saying if i already know it's going in there before i see it that's an impressive statement florida Ooh. man wielding Shit a sword the thumbnail. Sets fire in roadway, floods booking office after arrest. That is what happened. That is just what happened. I'm in trouble. Titusville, Florida. Authorities say when they arrived to four feet high flames in a Broward County roadway, they Jeez. found a man holding a sword and drinking alcohol. This is a Disney World. Deputies say they were an active patrol when they spotted the flames on Craig Avenue at 2.12 a.m. Oh, my gosh. According to police, the fire was in front of the man's house, who they visited around five times in the past six months for illegal oh, burns. Okay. Uh, uh. Officials say the fire ranged from being on the sidewalk to taking up the entire street. Officials say when they met speak man with suspect Scott Taylor, he was sitting in his front yard holding a sword in his hand and had a knife in his waistband. Police say he was actively drinking in front of them and began chugging from a half gallon size Captain Morgan Spicer. That's intense. Dude has got a little captain in him. He's got the sword. Half, half, half gallon? <laughs> He's got more than a little captain in him. Oh, police say when Wait. the man was, was in a holding cell, he intentionally broke a fire sprinkler head, causing water to flood from the ceiling in the booking room. Oh, oh, oh that's oh, man. man if you thought he was in trouble before for burning his own house down. Man was eventually transferred to the Broward County Jail. He faces charges of intentional and reckless burning of lands and felony criminal mischief. <laughs> the look on his face. I know. When you're That's when amazing. you're proven to be not safe for Florida, yeah, you better believe you're in trouble. It just looks like he's trying to do the puppy dog eyes almost, looking up like me. What me worry? Um, uh, just that the you're already in there for fire and for a mask of fire and yeah. sword. At two twelve in the morning on a Thursday. <laughs> so already, everybody involved is not happy about this. No, no, no one wants to even look at you right now. Even though that mugshot is a gem, no one wants to look at you right now. But How? then you get there and decide you're gonna break the fucking. Why the fuck would you? If I give you enough water to put out that fire, will you let me out, officer? <laughs> Oh, that's that's not how that that's not fucking how that that's the not how fact, that worked. The fact that meth was not involved in any of this article is a miracle, too. But then again, a half gallon of captain and eh, holding a sword, four foot fires, middle of the night. OK, yeah. Eh. Also, they have already visited his house several times over the past six months for fire as well. <laughs> At what point do you say, we can't have you out in public anymore, sir? Sorry. Scott, We're sorry. Scott told us you weren't going to set any more fires. I know. It would have been, been much more drunk, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then holding a sword. Uh, the fact in charges of intentional or reckless burning of lands and felony criminal mischief, I feel like and just somehow I feel like there should be more on that list. I don't know all the legal terminology for the cop codes and everything. I feel like that list should be a little bit longer for everything he's been doing. I can't imagine what it must be like to be neighbors with this man. It's oh man, it's probably just first of all, a lot of fire, a lot. Six months. I mean, there's a lot of barbecues out there. See, I'm I'm weird. I watch shows that people are all around me think are funny, but I think are tedious and terrible. Like, for example, Family Guy, and okay. and just watching Peter Griffin do all the Peter Griffin things, and it must be like living next door to fucking Peter Griffin. 
except without the talking dog and the funny flashbacks, just all the horrible shit he does. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Except instead of a family, it's just uh, Captain Scott yeah. and his sword yeah. and a whole lot of lighter fluid. Yep. Did it say how he made the fire? Because yep. that's also something they really need to address. If like, the flames were that high, spreading from, like, what is it, the end of his street to the guy's house? You, you want to know how he made the fire? Oh. Where's the rum gone? Oh. He's standing around the fire. Oh. <laughs> 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 Where's Rob gone? Um, so yeah, oh. that, that was that that first thing we learned this week is maybe after the first time you set the street on fire, call it a day. Yeah. You don't need to do that like six times. No. It's six months worth. <laughs> also, if they tell you to look at it in the camera for a mugshot. <laughs> Just try to look normal. He bless his heart. I know. I, I think it hit him like that split what? second. Oh, me? We've learned that um, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Yes. Especially if it involves flying, flying a fucking plane. They already had a solution for that to get the plane back, too. That also kills me. Yeah. It's not like this is the only way they could have done it. Ugh. We learned if you're going to break into someone's house, there's probably a lot thing, a lot better stuff in there to make it worthwhile no. than a fucking Mountain Dew. Man, that guy was thirsty. Three bucks of sugar water and you're going to jail, dumbass. We've learned that if you're moderating a game forum and they keep le leaking classified documents, which is a felony, yes, which is that's that's the, the government and the military and they're not happy. Maybe don't let them do that. Okay, guys, that's strike two. You're getting a ban for 24 hours. Ugh. This is light treason here. Maybe not let them do that. Come on, guys. I just got back from my meeting. Don't make me do the ban hammer now. Ugh. We've learned that if you manage to rob a bank once, congratulations, you win. It's done. Yes. Yeah. There's no sequel with that same bank. This isn't no. Ocean's 13 and shit. <laughs> Ocean's 14. We're going to do the exact same bank heist, the exact same time with the exact same people. They won't see it coming. Oh. Finally, we've learned if, if you have to call 911 for assistance with peeing, you have far bigger problems. Yes. And... If there's one victory trophy, if there's one uh, acknowledgement, hats off to that 911 operator up north who <laughs> she had no time for this shit. did not want to hear any crap about a grown man having to pee. I, I don't even, I can't even imagine how they keep 911 operators. With all the shit we hear people do on 911, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. And like they have to record everything. They have to go through prompts. They have to make sure they get all the information down. They can't hang up on people either. That's the kicker. They cannot hang up on anyone. They can't. Uh, it's 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 like the worst fucking game of trying not to swear. 911, what's your emergency? Facebook, go bye bye. Oh, you motherfucker. I mean, it's, it's son of a. How can I help you, sir? And a blood vessel bursts in your brain and you die. Oh. 